So how do you how do you flip that that mindset? How do you flip that perception from I'm not that good at this to actually being something you can work with? Yeah. So I think the first thing to do, well, after first thing is we'll, we'll walk back up the steps, but I only do the first two because I think that's all you need in order to change the paradigm. The first thing you need to do is make a promise to yourself and keep it. Then make another one and keep it. Then another one and keep it. You being able to keep promises to yourself puts you in a place where you believe that if you say something's going to happen, then it happens. And you can count on yourself. It's really hard to trust and count on other people if you can't trust and count on yourself. So our competition... Our direct competition, Redfin, Zillow, and all these other guys, Realtor.com, they're spending money here. But where we win is if we go into the niches, into the long tail, the long tail keywords, right? So here, I wanted to show you that. Let me go back to this. Because as soon as the ad pops up, I click on it. All right, so we're going to we're going to blow your mind today cuz I've got a guest on here who is the founder of a company called Dream Catchers, which first of all that in and of itself should tell you that we're we're going to be talking about some interesting stuff. Plus he's also um does a lot of development but does it in a way that helps, you know, normal people invest and so we're talking about the apex performers and the secret like the secret habits they have. Uh Jerome Myers is his name but, but I was told I could call you Jay. Can we just call you Jay? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right. And I asked him before we started, I'm, I'm Jesse Zagorski, right? One of the moderators here at Lab Code Agents. And I asked him, I said, do we have anything we're promoting? What are we talking about with any agenda? And your answer, Jerome, was? I'm just here to serve, man. I, I want to give your audience something that's going to make them rethink what they're going to do the next half of the year. And I know it's July or August. I guess it is August. It feels like July. It's August. And we got to finish strong. I think a lot of people said, I'm done for the year. I'll try again in 2023, but there's still time. We got to get going. We got to go. I love it. I love it. All right. So, so this topic in terms of like secret havocs of apex performance, we can get into the development and the, you know, dream catches what that is in a minute, but have you always been someone that have, uh, you know, cultivated your own habits have studied those or wh where did this come from? I mean, I got obsessed with wealth when I was young. You know, I'm the son of a soldier and a stay-at-home mom, and I just wanted to know what the difference was between the people who lived in, I mean, a 1,300 square foot house. They bought it in the 80s, so it, it was a decent sized house, right? But I went to elementary school, middle school, and high school with people who had houses twice, three, four times the size of my house. And I was like, well, what's the difference? And the one thing I learned early on when I was probably four, maybe five, I was playing in the front yard with my mom as we always did on Thursday mornings. And I could hear the trash truck coming down the main street. And he made that turn, that right turn on my street. And he went to the first house and then the second house and then the third house, he knew he had an audience. And so he did it how he always does. He hopped off the truck, did a little spin, popped the top off the top of the trash can and spent around like a quarter then fell flat. He did a little pirouette, dumped the trash in, and then spent it back to the curve like a Frisbee, right? I'm going nuts, Jesse, because I know what the next thing is, because I was the third house on the street. He's going to pull the lever and crush the trash. And for a kid to see that machine do that stuff, it was, it was nuts. It was, it was just totally amazing. So I look at my mom and I say, hey, mom, I want to be a trash man when I grow up. And she looks at me and she says, baby, do you like your Nikes? Mm-hmm. Do you like your Jordache jeans or that guest shirt you have on? I was like, yeah. He said, well, you got to pick a profession. You got to pick a career that's going to allow for the lifestyle that you want to live. And I said, but Lonnie, Lonnie gets off at like two or three. And when his kids come home from school, they can play. And daddy doesn't come home till after dark sometimes. So I, I, I want to be able to do that. She said, yeah. But being a trash man isn't going to allow you to buy the stuff that you want. She said, maybe you can own a company. Maybe you can own a trash company. And plus, when it's really hot or it's really cold, do you really want to be hanging off the back of a truck? 
And I said, well, you know, I didn't think about that. She said, look, you want to pick something that pays you well so you can do what you get done for you, for your kids too. And I looked at her and I realized like all of the innocence of being able to just go out and play for work was gone, right? It, it was totally gone. She, she, she destroyed that for me. But as I was going through, I realized that, you know, some people had parents that were doctors, dentists, entrepreneurs. One guy had a heating and cooling business and they made a whole lot more than a soldier. They made a whole lot more than a truck driver. They made a whole lot more than a post office letter carrier. And I wanted to figure out how they did that, how they figured that out. And so that's where the quest really started when she told me that, hey, you're going to have to figure out how to earn the money you want to earn in order to be able to live the lifestyle you want to live. How old were you when this, when this all went down? Uh, so that incident with Lonnie and I, anybody who's got kids and they've seen baby shark know that I was doing my rendition of baby shark when Lonnie came down the street. Um, I was probably four or five, man. Uh, wow. it, it was right before I got into school. You know, I'm the only child. So we were just kind of hanging out on those random days. So, so, so all these years later, cause we'll get into something. That's how you kind of started this pursuit. All these years later, do you feel like you got back to the place where you do just get to play for work? Oh man. Yeah, absolutely. Now it was a long journey to get there. Long, long, long journey to get there, but work is play. Yeah. Without question. And there's a level of freedom that I experienced today that had I continued on the path that I was on, I, I know I wouldn't be able to experience for sure. So, so in that journey in the middle, what were some of the things you learned? Like how, I mean, because I have a feeling we're not going to get through everything in 30 minutes, but like, what are some of the pieces on this journey? Oh man. Uh, well, let's go to <laughs> laying people off two years in a row. So on January 13th, I, I took on my last job, January 13th of 2015, my last role. Uh, I, I walked in, we had one other employee in the division. We had $0 in revenue. Uh, by the, the end of September, we had 175 people on my team. By the end of the year, we did $20 million in revenue. We had 30% profit margins. And it was just a rocket. And we made a bunch of new leaders. And I get a phone call on December 24th. It was something like this. Hey, Jerome, I made a decision. And we're going to lay half of them off. And I'm like, no, that's not what we're going to do. He said, yeah, I know we've been going back and forth about this for a few weeks, but yeah, you know, I, I finally made a decision. It's like, no, no, no. He's like, Jerome, we're not here to negotiate. I'm here to let you know that this is what's going to happen. Now you can be a part of this or we can have somebody else do it, but this is what we're going to do. And, you know, I'm pretty stubborn. It's like, no, 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 that's not what we're going to do. And he's like, look, man, I'm going to go spend the rest of the year with my family. It's Christmas Eve. It's five o'clock. I'll talk to you next year. And then the phone went dead. I was like, maybe we got disconnected. Then I realized he just hung up on me because he was tired of listening to me banter with him. And so the following year, a very similar thing happened. And I was just like, I can't do this anymore. And it was my first time being the person who was delivering that type of news to folks. So I was like, this isn't what I went through all the schooling and all the tests and the certifications for. Uh, convincing people and motivating them to do this thing only to tell them, hey, you got to go find another way to feed your family. So, you know, that's one of them. And another example is being moved into a role that was supposed to accelerate my career back in 2009, 2010, and getting trapped there and applying for 100 jobs, getting 10 interviews, and getting offered zero jobs. And I was somebody who was identified as a high performer in the company at that point and we were like 17 or 18,000 people at the company I was working at but just being there and knowing that nobody was going to help me because of the person who got me into the position that I got into without me having an interview the world is such an interesting place Jesse you you go on this journey you feel like you're going through these struggles these challenges for no reason and then in hindsight, you always find out why you had to have those experiences. And both of those have been, you know, things that I wish I would have never had to experience, especially the laying folks off. I consider that one traumatic, but uh, 
I know why I had to go through them today. So, you know, we've been on a lot of different rides, but that's a big piece and a part of how we got to this place of play. And I, and I totally understand also how you embrace the entrepreneurship concept, like going through these journeys, it seems to make sense. You, you said something in one of those roles that I'm, I want to dig into for a minute. Um, you said we, because we have a lot of, you know, real estate agents, obviously listening to, to this, this uh, show today, you created, or you were involved in this number of these leaders that were created. Yeah. Can you, can, do you develop talent? How do you do that? Does it come back to habits? What are some of the things you do? Yeah. So imagine two employees going to 175. You got to put some leadership in place in order to get all of those pieces working in some type of synergy or harmony. As when you grow that fast, talking nine months, there are going to be some people who get opportunities to be in leadership roles who were not prepared for them. They weren't cultivated. They weren't, you know, apprenticed by somebody else. And so usually what happens when you move somebody into a role is they emulate what was done for them because most folks are not working to improve their leadership skills on a whim. Now I had been because I knew that I wanted to be a leader, but the people who were reporting into us didn't. And so we had to go in and tuck them through different books. And one of the books that was pretty transformational was the 21 irrefutable laws of leadership. And so on a biweekly basis, we would come in and discuss a chapter of that book as a team so that we had a common language for the leadership group. And then they would go off and do their work. And the whole goal was to make it practical. And so, yeah, I mean, part of what we do is develop leaders and, you know, leadership development sounds boring. We try to make it sound a little sexy and say, uh, we develop business leaders, right? Or we do leadership development for business leaders. Cause I don't think a lot of people understand that the only thing that matters at an organization is the leadership. They'll set the culture, they'll create the strategy, and the better they are, the better off the organization will be. You, your organization can't exceed the cap of the leadership. And so one of the laws there is the leadership lid, and we, we believe in that wholeheartedly. And we look for folks who are looking to raise that lid so that they can continue to grow their enterprise. And, and that is, that is a good book, by the way. I was, I was like, I'm pretty sure that I just looked up another mono. It's Maxwell, right? Like that, that's yeah. it's, yeah, that, yeah. that's a great book. Um, are there things that you have done, like in your own journey? Do you have a certain things you do on a daily basis that tie into leadership? Like, because you said you're trying to level up your own skills. Is that still the journey you're on? Oh, absolutely. It's a daily practice, and so you know, on a on a good day, I spend four hours on myself, and so usually get up between four and five and I don't take my first meeting until after nine. And I just spend that time doing the work on my body, but also on my mind. And so either reading something or listening to something or watching something related to growth leadership, something where you can figure out influence and persuasion because those tasks, those, um, those talents, those skills can be cultivated. I know some people think leadership is something you're just born with, but all the things that leaders do can be taught to others. Hmm. Any, any uh, mistakes either you've made or you see commonly made along the way as someone's trying to develop these habits? Yeah. So we, we run another program in the financial services industry right now called the leadership bullpen. And one of my favorite books out of that, even though some people felt like it was a tough read was, um, radical candor. And in that book, it splits the way that we communicate with other people into four different quadrants. Uh, manipulative insincerity is one of them. Um, radical candor is one of them. And then the other two are kind of, it's kind of a progression. And so let me explain. So you're just like, uh, empathetic. You, you accept and listen to every story that the person tells you. And he's like, okay, okay. And it's almost like you're making excuses for them because they didn't do the thing. And then you just start saying, oh yeah, okay, well, you know, whatever, you know, I, I, I hear you and you're just feeding me a line of bull. And then instead of like actually challenging the person, you just let it go. Then you move over to the other side where you're just obnoxiously aggressive, right? And in the obnoxious aggression, you're like, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's when the sarcasm and stuff starts coming out. And if 
you have a strong enough relationship, you actually make it out to radical candor where you are talking to the person and having a conversation where you show them that you care, but you're also challenging them. And that's the space where we want to be. But like that game, like most people work around that clock and they never get to the radical candor one. It just becomes a toxic relationship and then somebody exits. And so what we want to do is help people stay in that uh, radical candor uh, quadrant so that they don't lose people who are really talented. They don't lose people who they can really help and get helped by. Uh, and so, you know, the communication is the game, man. Uh, it's kind of the long and the short of it. I, I love that. Like, so if anyone's listening here, who's a team leader, like runs a real estate team, I, I, I'm definitely going to recommend and check out that book. How about on the flip side, if someone here is like, just a solo real estate agent, they're kind of an army of one. How do they go about, do they have to go find someone to have these radical you know, kind of, if you're not, if you're an entrepreneur and you're operating on your own, what do you do? Well, but you're not right. There's no opportunity where you create it and then you get to execute it. The only way that opportunities have is through connection with other people. And so whether it's with the house, right? When they're brokering, then if they're not the broker, then they have somebody they got a relationship with. They've got the people they list for. They've got the people who have listed for the things that they are helping their buyers buy. Like right. everything that you go in and do, you relate with. And so this kind of ties into our model. We don't believe like that you can compartmentalize any of this stuff, right? There's six levels. It starts with self-image, relationship, and work. That's where all the stress is in your life. So if you can turn down the stress, you stop doing the self-destructive habits that negatively impact your health. From health, you move up to prosperity because I think everybody knows somebody that's prosperous, but they don't have their health. So if you're working with us, we don't want you to go backwards. We want to get your health then increase your prosperity. That way you can actually enjoy your prosperity. A lot of people feel like it's over when they reach level five. They've self-actualized. They figured out the money problem. But the reality is eventually they will start asking the questions. What was it all for? Is this it? And then they'll be saying, I'm empty. Why am I here? Right? They're, they're seeking fulfillment. They're, they're looking to actually live in that purpose. And so level six, and this is a pinnacle for us, is significance. We believe that significance is the only real success. Your ability to positively impact other people is what your legacy will be. It is a thing that will create immortality for you. Some people prefer to call it legacy, but it is the thing that we're all seeking. And so we help people get through one through five. And then when they're ready to make their significance play, it's just a totally different ball game, right? So again, nothing though, because a lot of people, hey, I'm a business coach. I'm gonna teach you how to run your real estate practice. Okay, or I'm gonna teach you how to market, or I'm gonna teach you how to be a better salesperson. Yeah, all that's nice for you to get those tactics, but when you're implementing it, if you had a fight with your significant other, it's gonna negatively impact the way that you go out and show up in the world. I don't care how good you think you are at compartmentalizing, it's gonna happen. And oh, by the way, if you can't figure out how to improve that, you're very likely to go do something that's going to negatively impact your health, which is further going to impact the way that you show up for other people. And so all of this stuff starts to unravel because we're trying to optimize parts and pieces instead of the whole system. Ah, I love that. So, so you really look at the, the system as a whole is probably is where you start. I think there's the only way that you can actually make real progress. How, how did you arrive at that? Because <laughs> I'm the guinea pig, right? And so I thought I could compartmentalize. I thought I, because what happened early on when I, I, I played football through college and I got the opportunity to coach at the high school level at night after I would leave my engineering job. And so when everything else in the world was going bad back in 2009 when I was applying for 100 jobs and only got 10 interviews and didn't get any job offers. The only thing that was going well for me was the football field. And so I thought that if I could just have fun there, then everything else would be okay. But I went from one place that sucked home to another place that sucked work 
to then go to practice. And for the life of me, I thought that that would make everything better. It didn't. I was just escaping. It's no different than getting drunk or high or whatever other thing that people use to escape the reality that they don't really like their life. So it's my ambition. It's my goal to help people create a life that they don't need to escape from. You don't need to numb. You don't need to take the edge off, right? And then you can actually live in this. And, and we see that with people in sales. Real estate's a great example, right? Because you're only as good as your last sell for right. most people. Yep. But then if you forget about all the things you've done up to this point, it's really easy for you to start believing the narrative that you're not very good at what you do. And if, more often than not, that's not true. In fact, you're probably pretty good. Now, there are some people who are narcissists and they think they're better than they are, of course. But for the vast majority of people, we've been beat up. We've been taught that we're not that good and we need something else in order to be successful or okay at what we do, good enough. And I, I just don't know that that's true for most folks, especially if you're being intentional in your approach. Hmm. So, so how, do you, how do you flip that, that mindset? How do you flip that perception from, I'm not that good at this to actually being something you can work with? Yeah, so I think the first thing to do, well, after, first thing is we'll, we'll walk back up the steps, but I'll only do the first two because I think that's all you need in order to change the paradigm. The first thing you need to do is make a promise to yourself and keep it. Then make another one and keep it. And then another one and keep it. You being able to keep promises to yourself puts you in a place where you believe that if you say something's going to happen, then it happens. And you can count on yourself. It's really hard to trust and count on other people if you can't trust and count on yourself, right? And so then once you start fostering that uh, relationship with yourself of accountability, then you can go up to level two, which is relationships with others. And so there's three different places where we drop relationships. One, mutually beneficial. Two, not mutually beneficial, but can be reframed. And three, never going to be mutually beneficial. So those relationships that are never going to be mutually beneficial, we want to end those immediately right? Because they are draining you. And majority of us don't actually have the energy to carry vampires and parasites along with us. Get those out the way because all they're doing is taking from you. The next one is not mutually beneficial, but could be. Well, we need to have that conversation. We will need to recontract that. We need to renegotiate that such that they know that there's an expectation that you give as much as you take. That way your account doesn't go negative because that's what happens with a lot of peak performers. They're used to people only coming to them to get things. In fact, there's almost an ego piece of it of, oh, well, you can't help me. I can only help you, right? We don't, we're not good receivers. But how can you be a great giver if you're not a good receiver? I, I just don't think that that is a thing that can be true. And then the final piece is the ones that are mutually beneficial. So if you got rid of probably 80% of your relationships, as I've seen in most spaces, now you got a whole lot of time to really invest in the relationships where you're being fed, you're being poured into. Doing that by itself will change the way that you see the world. And, you know, this, this is a G-rated program, and so I'll abbreviate, but if you're surrounded by a-holes, then you're going to believe that things are not that good, and you're not going to think you're that good. Whereas if you've got people around you who truly believe and want the best for you, and they're willing to invest in your success, you're going to start seeing the world a lot differently. And if you try to say bad things to yourself, they're not going to let you. They're going to defend you. They're going to recorrect. They're going to correct or recorrect the narrative that you're sharing with yourself. How, how long or how quickly can, that pro can people do that process? I mean, can you do it in, in days? Does it take weeks, months? Does it just depend? You can do it as fast as you're willing to do it. As soon as you get rid of the first relationship, which can take people years if they're not careful, you can get started. But so many of us, so many of us just want to have people around. It doesn't matter if they're quality people. We just want to have people around. Because having people around makes us feel safe. It makes us feel secure. But if they're using you, I don't think there's safety in that. Interesting. Uh, I really want to dive into that. I only have a few minutes. By the way, if anyone listening has questions, type them in the Q&A box, the chat box, whatever you need, so we can ask uh, Jerome questions, whatever you have. Um, 
All right. We, in the little bit of time we have left, if no one, I'm waiting to see if any questions pop up, but is there anything we haven't covered today that you're like in the, in the topic of habits? I really want to make sure people know this. Anything we haven't gone over yet. So habits create your life, right? So you have the choices. The choices lead to the habits. The habits create the life. If you want to live a life of your wildest dreams, you have to create habits that are going to deliver that. And so we've all been programmed by somebody to do something. If you aren't getting the outcomes that you want, then you can't just focus on the outcome. You got to change your program. That's the only way that this happens. The program that you have has gotten you what you have right now. You need a different program to get what you want, assuming you don't have it. Hmm. So, so someone who's operating at the level that you're at now, like, what does your day look like? I'm curious because you, you mentioned you get up early. You got four or five hours of, you know, working on yourself, health, mind, everything. What's the rest of your day look like? Yeah, so I spend a lot of time sitting in this chair and people from all over the country come in and they tell me about their challenges. They tell me about their, their wins. They tell me about the things that they're scared of. And we work through those. And we create a story that serves them so that they can go out and be the conquerors that they are. Uh, Then five-ish, done. And I put my phone down and I go off and I do what I want. I play with the kids. I play with my partner. I drive cars. I, I do the things that I enjoy doing most, right? And then we rest. We probably read, we eat a healthy meal, and then we do it all over again. Because for me, that's what I wanted to do. You know, when I, when I first came out and I was trying to get into multifamily and getting turned down by 10 banks, I was like, man, if I could just get the real estate thing going, then I'd be okay. But then I realized I was a lone wolf and I really miss people. I, I miss the opportunity to interact and engage with them and help them unlock their potential to help them achieve things that they don't really believe that they could do on their own. And you're, in natural, that, co- you're a natural coach. I mean, that you well, said you, uh, football, like that's part of who you've been. Obviously you're drawn to it. For sure. And that, that's a big part of that, Jesse, is because that had the biggest impact on my life. Right? I learned more from sports than I did school or church or any of the other places that I've been right? Interacting with people, what hard work gets you, discipline, dedication, keeping promises to yourself and others. Like I can run down the list, but it it taught you life. It taught you things aren't always fair. It taught you have to overcome some adversity. Sometimes you're down, but you can still overcome and win. Like there's just so much there and being able to get the thing out of a person that they don't even know is there. It's almost like being a, a OBGYN and, and bringing babies into the world, man. There's a whole lot of mess. It's super messy. It's inconvenient. People <laughs> might cry. They might yell. But when you get it out, everybody's blissful, man. And I think everybody has something to birth. I, I think everybody has a thing that's deep inside them that can absolutely make a huge impact on the world. And if you're still breathing, I'm charging you with that. Right? Your dreams should be real. You should go do that thing that's been on your heart and know that if you don't want to do it for you, there's somebody who you haven't met who's counting on you to do it so that they have the platform, they have the foundation, they have the base to go do the thing that they're here to do. I love it. That's probably the best way we could pull this all together to run what you just said. Like like that was the perfect way to tie it all in. Um, If people want to find you, follow you, talk to you, what's the best way for someone to find you? Yeah, the best place to go find out more is JeromeMyers.co. And I'm I'm on LinkedIn daily, man. So hop in the DM and we can get a conversation going. Cool. And this is, if someone's listening to the recording, this is in the LabCode agent group. It's on YouTube. We'll tag you in it. We'll put your info there too in the show notes so everyone can can continue. This is such a cool conversation, man. I, uh, I just, I love your energy and I love your perspective. Thank you so much for having me on, Jesse. This has been awesome. Nice to meet you. Enjoy the rest of your day, man.